So, we have got a problem. I um, checked my rigs this morning when they automatically start up and this guy powers up for a bit and powers straight off again. So we're just going to run through what the causes of this might be. So we're going to start with the power supply. Um, after we check all the power connections and go from there. So first up I'm just checking for any Connections that look like they have been overheated or melted. Usually, like discoloration or plastic not quite feeling right. So, oh, hello. That just fired up and back down again. What is going on? Alright, I'm going to reseat all the power connections. Okay, so I just checked everything. It seems all right. I do notice something stranger. Every few seconds, the power supply will start to power on, and it'll either turn off straight away, or it'll wait for the bias beep and then shut down. So what we're going to try next is unplug all these one by one, the video cards first. Oh, I mean, that's... There's only the one peripherals for the hard drive, so I doubt that's going to be doing much. Even just then, I heard the power supply tick on and off. So I'm just going to... Switch off at the mains over there. And we're going to unplug the PCI Express. Except for the one that goes to the processor. So just going to be careful because it uses the same connector, which is that one. Just check all the connectors as we take them out. Make sure they're so it's burnt out. Uh, got peripherals there, mainboard there. All right, let's see if that powers on. I got nothing. No, even with the video cards unplugged. It's not powering up. So next, unplug the hard drive, although highly unlikely. There's literally only that SATA drive connected. Uh, which, where is it? Uh, for the wires. Uh, so it's that one. That one has to stay plugged in. It's the processor. It's untangling the wires a bit. So what's that go to? That goes to that riser, so we'll unplug that one. And the other peripherals, we'll just unplug them all. A bit dusty, I hate dust around them. Alright, let's see if it works this time. Now we got nothing, so um, we've narrowed it down to power supply or something on the main board. So fortunately, when I bought these power supplies cheap, I don't know, I'd be a bit surprised if it's going to be the power supply. 10 year warranty, you know, I'm, I'm hardly loading it, I literally load, load these things at 50%. So anyway, let's get the other power supply and see if we can get it to boot. So good thing about buy multiple power supplies is um if you ever need a drop-in replacement you've always got one ready to go so let's bring it over one problem i just realized this is a 660 uh which isn't gonna be a big problem that one's an 860 because uh, i bought two 660s at the same time uh, but this thing draws currently in the range of 500 550 watts so that'll work in the meantime but um long term i want to warranty that if it's the drive. So let's unpack it and um, plug it in.
comes in a fancy little pouch. Let's get it out. Alright, so even though it's only a 660, it's literally got the same connectors as the 860, which is easy because we can just sit it right next to it and plug it in and see if that's causing a problem. So as you can see, just having it right next to it, you can just plug that straight in. Don't even have to pull the old power supply out. Alright. Alright, so I'm just going to plug everything in to start with. I was just contemplating how I go about this. Let's just plug it all in and fire it up. Using up all the PCO Express connectors. Not looking good. Main board. Yep, did exactly what it did with the old other power supply. All right, it's going to do one more thing, which is uh, oh, the fan's still running. How is that still running? It's definitely off. Capacitors powering it. All right, so let's go back to just main board and just double check that if this main board's gone. That's not good, because I have a spare main board, but I never got around to buying a one to four times splitter. So I'm not actually going to be able to run all the cards. I'm going to run two cards. All right, let's try this. Power on. And the CPU fan off, went straight off, off straight away. Great, so we're going to have to remove the main board, at least we've isolated it's not the power supply. Okay, so I've decided I'm just going to strip it apart. Um, should we take the video cards out? We have to take the lower two video cards out, and then we'll get the main board out and have a close look and see if there's anything going on. might have some silicon oil or something that's... Accumulated a heap of dust, who knows? I'll just get it out and have a look. So I'll just do that off camera and I'll be right back. One thirty seventy. I was just thinking before too, I'm gonna to power it up with those two video cards removed because yeah, they may actually be causing the problem because they're plugged they get their power from the main board. I 
one thirty sixty. That looks alright. This is the one that I modified with that cooler. Keeps it 10 degrees cooler having a thing on it. Heat sink. Alright, so now we can get a bit of a look at the main board. Can't really see anything concerning. Oh, a lot of. Look at that. It's silicon oil, uh, but it's non conductive, so theoretically it shouldn't cause any issues. So I will note at work, I have found that when people put way too much cheap thermal grease on a processor, it will get in between the processor and the pins and cause the system not to boot. So I don't know if you heard that, not to boot. Um, yeah, it comes up with a keyboard error if you put one of those diagnostic things in. Oh, the, the equipment we work on has diagnostic LEDs telling you what happens on boot up, but why it stopped. So yeah, it's just something I've always kind of kept in the back of my mind. All right, will it boot? So now we've got literally nothing apart from the mainboard, processor and RAM. So let's see how it goes this time. Fingers crossed it's not actually a video card. I'd actually rather a mainboard go than a, a video card. All right, power on. Hear a beat. Nope, power's off. Main board. All right, let's kill the power and get the main board out. So just pulling all the cables out. So it's times like this. Um, if you ever design your own mining chassis, which I did, is uh, you really appreciate all those little things that you did, like um, pre-measure things, thinking if I ever have to remove this, can I do it without... You know, I mean, as you see before, those two video cards just slide out, maybe on a bit of an angle. Um, if you make it too tight, you're not going to be able to do that, obviously. There we go. Break some cable ties. I'm not going to go overboard, I'm just going to get everything roughly out of the way. Yeah. And just check out that board and see if we can fire it up on the test bench. So I've got my uh, exceedingly long mining rig screwdriver so I can get into all the screws nice and easily. So, alright, I'm just going to get the board out and I'll be right back. Riser cables up out the way. Okay, so board coming out. So do those. And here we have our main board. So let's have a look. Let me see. Oh, that fly just fell off. Lovely. There's a lot of, uh, if you can see that, let's put that down so it doesn't blow up. There's a lot of silicon oil around here, around here. So what we might even do, I think, I'm going to take that off, that thing never worked. Uh, I think what we'll do is just take the processor and memory off and just give it a really good clean and see if we can fire it up on the bench. Taking out the old Xeon, uh, what is it, an L, I can't remember, it's like a 1.3 gigahertz Xeon, 13 watts of power, it's an absolute powerhouse, perfect for mining. Yeah. Not expecting the thermal paste to be bad or anything, oh, there's a mosquito under the uh, heat sink. Let's take this thing off because it doesn't need to be there. Using the wrong screwdriver, of course. Let's take the RAM out. 16 gig DDR3. Yeah, nothing's leaked in there. It's alright. Pre 
processor out. Ugh, it's like a bug there. Alright, so we'll put that in the RAM aside. And I think this pool needs a really good wash. It doesn't work. I don't know what I'm going to do actually. I mean, this is actually a pretty good board. You've got three full size PCI Express, or the top one up there, that's actually a four. You can see the metal pins in there. It doesn't populate the whole way along. But total PCI Express, you've got let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Hang on. Those six. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six. So it's not a bad board. I didn't even buy this board for mining. I just had it laying around. And... So anyway, let's stop jibber jabbing and give it a clean. Okay, so cleaning the main board. First thing I'm going to do is take this heat sink off. So let's spin it around. And do two screws. We'll reapply thermal paste or whatever after. That is not a big dish issue. What is a big issue is if you have moisture left under there. One side. Oops. Plastic washer. And second. Yeah, oh, man. Let's just sit this there. Going on under there. Ah, look at that. Things unscrewed itself. That's alright. Just hold that. Oh wow, that's really tight. Huh, that's not good. Certainly tells me this has been off before. So I bought this second hand off eBay, some guy in Hong Kong, and I was actually relatively speaking impressed with it, so I ordered another one and it was in the shittest condition I've ever seen a, a main board, like there was like, you can tell I've been washed and there's like bits of like blue corrosion everywhere, so I don't know, I don't, I don't trust a lot of people to wash main boards, they don't really know what they're doing. So my technique for washing main boards, oops, not me all the bits, is use something that's like a degrease. You're gonna give it a degrease because it's got all that oil and crud everywhere. Use a paintbrush. Then we're gonna use contact cleaner spray. And after that, we're gonna you know, contact cleaner spray will get under everywhere. And then put it on the dehumidifier and that will dry the board and warm it up to about 35 degrees then you've got the issue which I pointed out before which is you'll always get residual um, moisture under chips so I'll go around with a can of air and just give it a blast and see if any moisture comes out if it does then I'll stick it on the dehumidifier a bit longer so let's get to it I just took the uh, VRM heat sinks off and that is actually unbelievably still like sticky and looks all right <laughs> I don't know if it's been replaced. I've got a feeling this has been replaced. Um, it's like one mil thermal pad. So anyway, yeah, I just forgot before to take those off before we do this. So let's crack to it. Uh, first up, just gonna spray some spraying wipe. If I can get the thing open. Yep. And unplug the speaker. Yeah. You see it all, you can probably see that stain now. There's a big stain all around this area. I'll give that a little good spray. Oh, that, I didn't want that to happen. All right, I'm going to get some cardboard and I'll be right back. That's better. All right, now we're going to paintbrush just to get spring up in there probably take the battery out it's a good idea 
can do anything if I leave it in there. Bird providing some music in the background. CO contact cleaner. Uh, actually, I think I might rinse this off with water first. So let's do that first. Okay. Any water's alright to clean a main board, especially when you're about to use solvent. CO contact cleaner. Give a good rinse. All right, so it's just started raining, so I've had to move the ladder, washing ladder inside. So now it worked from the top. Make sure you always hit chips at an angle, just to give, a, give it a chance for the uh, CO contact cleaner to take the water away. So yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but I'm spraying it at an angle. So down this way. So that way, yeah, like I said before, it gets all the moisture out from anything. But the idea is once this goes on the dehumidifier shortly, um, the chips will get warm enough that it will evaporate. So I'm just gonna give this area a bit more of a blast than the rest of it, because um, that's where all that grease was. So fingers crossed this will help fix it. Um, if it wasn't for that silicon grease, I probably wouldn't bother doing this and I would probably write this board off. So I'm not even convinced this is gonna fix it. But hey, 10 minutes cleaning, if that. Um, instead of replacing a board is uh, the preferred method. Here we have our dehumidifier, or as I call it, my computer parts drying machine. So we'll put it on high, continuous, timer, one in hour, deionizing. So this thing gives out dry air up the top, so stick it like that. That will make the nice dry air go up through there. So within an hour this will be dry. So yeah, just just came back to have a look at the uh, stuff that was on that heat sink. It's weird, it's like a plastic kind of very, very thin sheet. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually someone's drawn a, a line over it with a what looks like a fluoro pencil, which I don't know why you'd want to do that. But I'm just going to have a closer look at the board. The reason that might have done this is because there's raised components that could short on that heat sink as it's been installed. So, um,. Yeah, probably a way around this if you've had to replace this. I'll put Teflon, high temperature Teflon tape around the outside edges and leave the square in the middle and put thermal paste there. So anyway, I'm just going to wait for that board to dry. Alright, the big test. So it's just been on the dryer. Yep, see that? Moisture. So it's not ready yet. So we'll just... Go under the chips, make sure that any moisture is out. Yeah, there's still water in the um, memory slots under there as well. So when you clear, clean a board out, with, especially when you use water, you need to get that water out from everywhere, obviously. But I've seen people clean boards and they forget this thing. So, back on the dryer. All right, she's all clean and dry. So let's reinstall the parts on there, namely the processor and the room.
Oh wow, this stuff's getting uh, a little bit dry. That's alright. It's only a 13 watt processor, so. And this is only to power it up. If it um powers up, then I think I'll bless it with a bit better quality thermal paste, I think. Heatsink back on. I'm not going to worry about putting thermal paste and uh, that high temperature tape, like I was saying before. And it also needs cleaning. But I just want to see if cleaning the board fixes it. So if the board fires up, we'll treat it to yeah, putting the heat sinks on a little bit better. The VRMs, I'm not even going to worry about putting that, that back on at the time being. So yeah, okay, that's screwed back on. So let's get a test power supply down. Oh, a bit old that one. And see if she fires up. Okay, so that's all plugged in and ready to go. And I just realized I don't have a PCI Express video card laying around that doesn't need power or... I just want to keep this really basic because that Xeon doesn't have an onboard graphics. So I'm just going to quickly power it up. Shouldn't affect it whether it's going to power on or not. And if we can power it on for more than a few seconds then we'll go find a video card to plug into it. Alright, so this board that bias was automatically set to power up, so as soon as we click that switch, she should go. Nothing. Oh, the bias is probably cleared. It's alright, I'll give it a manual startup. And where we got? Power is these two. Okay. And the spinning. Come on, keep spinning. If you don't spin, I'll have to throw you in the bin. And the bin it is. There it goes, turns on again. Actually, maybe, fingers crossed, it was just retraining the memory. No beep, because I don't have a speaker plugged in. Ah, oh, man. And I don't know where the speaker is. Uh, it's actually uh, still running. So let's get a video adapter and uh, she might be good. And here we go, moment of truth. Power on. And the bias will be cleared. So, short the pins. Like that. I found an old, it's up my old media center. It's like a HD5440. Hey, why's my screen not working? Because, is it plugged in? Yes. Wasn't that great? My um, monitor appears to have died. Oh, there we go. Need a bit of reseeding. So I heard a beep. That sounds promising. And what do we got? Load defaults into bias. Alright, so uh, looks like we're on the winning streak. Now, the question is do I run diagnostics or not? Yeah, I reckon I will. I've made up a bootable drive with some diagnostics, so I'm just going to chuck more memory in there and maybe run memtest. And I've also got a program called Quick Tech Pro that we use just to make sure all the functions in the main board are working okay. So let's go do that. All right, so we're just in the BIOS now. And that's a really, really crappy picture. I can't get it much better because uh, the backlight is starting to die in it. Anyway, we just first thing we go through is change the PCI Express version back to Gen 1. And if no one's ever explained that to you before, uh, basically different gens are different speeds. Slower the speed, the more reliable the data transmission over those USB 3 cables that you use on the risers. So the slower the speed, the less likely interferences cause issues. And the other thing we want to do is find it AC power AC back so we go always on so that way if there's ever a blackout and when the power is turned on to it when it starts mining off the solar from the timer then that will always be on I generally also disable things like the audio 
Oh, that's a big deal, but you don't need it. <laughs> Audio LED. I'll leave that on actually. I turned that off before. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. So save and exit. And let's put the mess rest of that RAM in and fix up those heat sinks. Alrighty, wife is out so we can use the kitchen sink. Maybe a spray. Let that sit for a couple minutes. Okay, so as you can see, I've put the um, high temperature tape surrounding that chip so we can take this uh, black stuff off. Yeah, it's going to crumble off. I have to use a knife to get that off. Yeah, just take that off. So it's got like sticky stuff on there. That sticky adhesive on this stuff. Same with thermal pa uh, thermal pads that have that. I just don't see the point of it. Because it acts as an insulator. Let's give it a quick clean. Yeah, looks good. This is probably a little bit overkill. Um, this is not exactly a high performance application, but um, I always like to do my best with this stuff where I can. And since I got the board out and cleaned it, I had to take it off anyway. So there we go. So I'm just going to put the heatsink back on and we'll carry on. Alrighty. So we're putting the board back in now. Let's be super careful. So I'm just going to put these screws back in and I notice some of these screw holes don't actually line up and I realised why it's currently about 12 degrees in my shed when I built this frame it was like a 40 degree day and I don't know if you know but things like aluminium move quite a bit throughout different temperature ranges so that's caused the uh, side effect of nothing lining up like quite literally. I kind of wonder if uh, maybe the board had buckled and you know gone against something because I mean these holes are really look, look at that that's out like you know like about three millimeters I mean, they'll still fit but I don't like stressing the board out so I'm kind of wondering how many of these screws I'm actually going to put back maybe it's better just to put three in uh, when, when I decide these things, I think, well, what, what do you need the screws for? Apart from holding the board in, you don't want it lifting when you pull a GPU out. Um, apart from that, I mean, you know, big deal, power connector, there's a, put a screw there, just to secure that area. Yeah, I'm still kind of a little bit puzzled why this board wouldn't boot. I mean, I didn't see anything that really looked terrible. I mean, like I've, I've commented before, I've, I've worked on industrial boards. And th those things are terrible state, and they, they still work half the time. You kind of just clean it because you feel sorry for it more than anything, more than it, the fact it actually needs it. And that just had a little bit of silicon oil that wasn't even that dirty. So, I don't know. All those power wires look all right. Anyway, let's just get it all back together and uh, fire it up.
in. Fan connector. In and in. Okay, and the big test. So I'm just going to plug the power in because I know this should just. Oh, I just realised I haven't plugged the SATA cable in. Thanks for reminding me. Got to plug that in. <laughs> no drive. Okay, SATA drive's plugged in. Let's power her up. Three, two, one. Power. I'm going to get a beep. Beep. Gonna beep. Hey, it's alright. I was expecting that because um, I added that extra eight gigram stick, and it hadn't retrained that memory yet. So I'm just gonna get this all just start up into Windows. Yeah, that's. Uh, I'm pretty happy. So who would have thought cleaning the mainboard would fix that problem? Uh, I've actually had that before. I don't know. I know in theory that silicon oil. It's non-conductive, but I mean, this is like literally the third time I've seen that happen. So uh, yeah, anyway, we'll power it off. And get it reinstalled. And go into remote desktop and make sure she's all good. All right, we're back. Let's see if we can log on. Hey, there we go, but what's going on? Doesn't look like it's actually pressing key to continue. How come T-Rex didn't start? That's a bit bizarre. Anyway, at least it's uh, working, so that's the start. Huh. What is, why is my script starting? So that's what it runs. Press the key to continue. T-Rex, there we go. What was that? That was bizarre. Uh, okay, let's uh, check device manager. I don't think the, what was that? Huh. Uh, one of our 1660 supers isn't being seen. It's a bit weird. Alright, let's go check that out. Alright, so I just powered it down. I think the only thing it could be one of these uh, PCI Express plugs. I remember I didn't quite make sure that the one, which is really, really squishy in there, was plugged in. Uh, feels alright actually. It's not good. Yeah, that's definitely in. Jiggle it about. This guy, are you in? He's in. Uh, that one's definitely in. And they're plugged in at the back. Ah, I just had to put the phone down and I'll just reseat them at the back. And there we have the reason why it wasn't working. That one runs off a Molex connector. Usually not recommended, but when you're using only what 60 watts or something, I think that one's at like 55 watts. It's perfectly fine. 
All right, let's get it back in and power it up. All right, let's try again. Hey! Hashing away like a hash machine. There we go. Looks like it's just started, so those two supers are just starting up. There we go. So we're back in business. So there we go. That's how you fix a mining rig that won't power up. So, uh, yeah. Next video. I don't even know if I'll do a video. Maybe I'll just re... It's probably just reseeding connections on that small miner for the RX 6600 that's not working. Oh, I don't know. I might as well document it because that's the idea of this, to do a vlog. So anyway, have a good day and I'll catch you later.